You know, never mind. I think it was just like a vacation for them, so he probably just paid everything. Uh, that'd be quite cool though, wouldn't it? One of the perks of the job. Anyway. Zamadu, aka Gwenchi. Oh, he's not married. Oh, my bad. My bad. Ah, oh, yes, a non mirror. PBZ. Wait, what? Com's only played three games this season? Are you kidding me? Why does Com not play any games? What happened to him? Com used to be like one of SDX's best players. Even last season, he played quite a few games. Alright. Well, Gwemji is uh, going to be playing to keep Air Force A's alive, and uh, he is definitely their strongest StarCraft 2 player. So if anyone can do it, it's him. He's got to stave off a 4-0 defeat here. Someone says, I thought Calm had switched to Terran. I thought that as well, actually. Apparently he switched back to Zerg. <laughs> Go figure. He decided he wanted to win some tournaments, so he switched back to Zerg. Trollololololol. Alright, whoa! In the top right corner, as the red Protoss, we do have Xanadu, aka Gwemji. And in the bottom left is the blue Zerg, we will have Calm. We are going to be on Cloud Kingdom, as you saw. Alright. So. What is Calm going to do? against the might of Gwemchi. What's up dude, you're on camera. I don't know why people get so shocked when they're on TV. It's like you can see the giant camera floating around. Hmm. Anyway. Oh man, some guy just got banned before I could even read what he said. Wow! The mods are on the ball. Anyway, we are going to have uh, an extractor. Okay, he's actually going to let that finish. Okay, so he's going gas and then pool. So he can get some super early link speed here, presumably. That's very interesting. This is like a brood war build. Going gas and then pool. This is like this is like over gas EVZ. What the hell? <laughs> anyway, so he did go. Uh, I believe 15 gas and then 15 pool or something like that. Maybe 14 gas, 14 pool. I wasn't actually quite paying attention. I was too busy being puzzled by by what what he's doing. Uh, so in response to this, Gwemchi is going to get his forge first. So he knows there is uh, definitely the risk of early Ling aggression. And I'm, I'm pretty sure this is just going to be used for early link speed. Uh, and then we'll see what the follow up is. Of course, that does leave a lot of options open because if you get that fast link speed, you can actually deny uh, the probe scouts. Just So basically, the Protoss won't be able to scout you until he gets an observer or something else like, I don't know, Hallucinated Phoenix. Nobody does that anymore, right? Why do people not do that anymore? At one point, that was really popular going for a fast hallucination and getting Hallucinated Phoenix to scout, and it doesn't seem like anyone does that now. I guess it's just not efficient or something. They just get real Phoenix instead. <laughs> anyway, uh, so so yeah, it's basically going to put the Protoss in the dark for a long time here. So he can either just double expand and kind of play just a standard go play standard going into the mid game, just you know kind of poke the front a little bit, scare the Protoss, maybe force a couple extra cannons. Or he can just go for some kind of uh, some fast lair or some kind of bailing bust even. It's, it's He's basically just free to do whatever he wants now because the Protoss can't see him. And he has taken the natural now. And he is in fact going for the fast lair. Okay. 
So, oh, he's also only got two guys on gas now, so he's pulled one off, and oh my god, he might get scouted. Oh, does not quite get scouted. That was very, very close. By the way, that's one very important chain, like, difference in the queen chain. Uh, for some reason, like, everybody is always, like, you know, QQing about ZVT and the queen change. But, you know, as a Protoss player, I, I guess it's just because of Protoss, but one thing I noticed is that it's so hard to probe scout now with the new queen range. You just can't get probes into your opponent's base at all. It's really annoying. I mean, I guess it's not as important now as it was in Brudor, but I'm just so used to be able to, to, like, sneak probes around the map and hide probes and just get scouts off whenever I want. And I can't do that anymore, and I'm very sad. Anyway, um... That two, that two guys on gas now might actually be a mistake, considering he's taking a second gas. I'm not sure if... See, that's still two guys on gas, but he's got three guys on the other gas. I'm like fairly certain that's a mistake now, but that's a very surprising mistake to see from uh, from Khan here. I mean, considering he's not really doing that much else, I'm not sure why he's why that's happened. Anyway, um, we do see a Stargate on the way for Sanadu. A uh, very, very safe option if you're not really sure what your opponent's doing. Because getting uh, the first Void Re out uh, really helps against any kind of crazy Roach attacks um, or, or even like uh, some kind of Nidus uh, attack. Although if you get Ling Bailing busted, you are in a bit of trouble though. <laughs> the Void Re just can't kill stuff fast enough. <coughs> but what we do see is actually, it is actually Bailings. Oh, and we see Drop! Is that Drop being researched? Oh my goodness. Is he going for... he's going for Baneling drops? Really? Well, that's interesting. Wait a minute. What's going on here? He's definitely getting one of the Overload upgrades. Actually, I'm not sure if that's speed or, or drop. Presumably he'll get both. And look at this, he's actually getting Sinigal's Overload to the top left. He's actually going to go for huge drop in the main. Oh my goodness, by the way, uh, notice how the Protoss, notice how Gwemchi is actually building pylons all around the perimeter of his base. Uh, that obviously helps him spot for any Nidus canals that might be coming in. Nidus Worm, sorry. Um, but he is not going to see this one coming. Now, the Void Ray will still be good against this. It'll be able to pick off all the Overlords so they can't keep dropping. But obviously Void Ray is not ideal against Lings and Banelings, as I said before. And, well, he's only got three Banelings, though. I think he should make a few more, though, if he wants to do this. Uh, well, the Void Ray is way far out on the map, and here we go, he's going in, but he's only got three Banelings, though. This doesn't seem particularly scary, but why is there no reaction? Dude, pull your probes, pull your probes. Alright, he's pulling the probes. Oh, he's even bringing the Void Ray back as well, and there go the Banelings, but they're not going to do anything, I think. So, well, actually, he's going after the Nexus. There's no units to kill the Lings. Oh my god, the Phoenix is actually killing the, uh, the, the Overlords, but... Whoa! Oh! He gets it! He gets the Banelings off! He had more Overlords! That's why he had only three Banelings in the main! He had more Banelings at the natural! Oh my god! 19 probes killed! And he's killed the main Nexus! Wow! What a strategy by Calm! Oh my goodness! Even though there are two Void Rays out, I think Gwemchi is completely dead now. Oh god, oh god! Wow, that is sick. Sick, sick, sick. And that was like a billion links in the main. But like, look at those Void Rays like, trying to just pew pew them down, but it's just like, ah. Oh, these freaking links, man. We can't kill them fast enough. And now Hydras are on the way to deal with those Void Rays and the Phoenix. And the Lings are still going to work on the Protoss main. Gwemchi's going to try and fight his way back into this, but he, it, he's, he's lost 19 workers, probably more actually, from that second drop. I mean, I don't know what he's going to do. He's to back down to one base, he's only mining off his natural, he's lost all the infrastructure that was in his main base. A few more Banelings actually hiding in the top right there. Do the Void Rays know that they are there? I don't know, I don't think so. But there are some sentries here at the natural though, so he will be able to force field his own ramp to keep the Banelings in his main and not go down to his natural, but I mean, still, it's quite bad. Oh, it looks like now the Void Rays are just going to check that uh, that everything has been killed. So he's got three Void Rays now, but look at this, the Void Rays are wasting all of their time just killing Lings in the main. This is going to take them forever. So this is giving uh, Calm plenty of time to just, you know, get as many Hydras as he wants, as he needs. I think uh, Gwemchi is just going to go for a Gateway plus Void Ray all in at this point. It's just a three Gate plus Void Ray all in. But if uh, Calm has enough Hydralisks, he'll be able to stop this easy peasy. He's making 8 Hydralisks right now. I believe Hydra Range is finished. 
He's getting plus one attack for those Hydras as well. All he needs to do really is mass Hydras. Because obviously, you know, there's not, you know, there's just only going to be some gateway units and the Void Rays. So, you know, Hydras kind of kill all of those. And yep, there are the first Hydras coming out. Plus one might actually even be finished before this attack starts. Well, actually, it's going to be close. Plus one's about halfway done now. Cells and sentries are making their way across. The Void Rays as well. Three Void Rays. Plus uh, however many gateway units he makes, as well as that Phoenix. I mean, this could still be potentially a little bit tricky. He's only got 12 Hydras right now, and there's more Warpins coming in here with some good zoning. And with the Guardian Shield, this is actually still a very, very scary force here. I feel like, uh, I don't know, did Calm drone too much here? He's got 14 Hydras now. The Queen at the front will help as well. He's got a Spore Crawler there as well, but oh, the first Void Ray! Whoa! Taking a lot of damage on that first Void Ray straight away. Gotta be so, so careful. And those Hydras, man, just have some sick DPS. Looks like, wait, he actually cancels. Oh my goodness, he's actually pulling back. It looks like Gwemchi, having seen all those Hydras, has decided to actually just uh, go back and play a longer game here. He's retaking his main base. But, I mean, he's 20, he's 24 supply behind the Zerg right now. And more Banelings are being made. Look at this. Calm is completely prepared for any kind of attack and have Hydras and Banelings to deal with it. But little does he know that the Protoss has actually retreated here. I, I don't think he'll care. Oh, yeah, he's just going to load them up and go drop again. Oh wow, this is very very cool. Unfortunately this does mean that uh, Air Force Ace is probably just going to get 4 0 here. It's quite sad for them. It breaks my heart when those guys, they try so hard but uh, they've lost so many good players. I mean Air Force Ace used to be have like quite a few good players back when you know like Boxer and Yellow were still on their team. But oh wells. So, Hydras are moving in. I think he's just going to go for a bust here. He's going to go for. He's going to move in with the Hydras in the front and then drop Banelings on the army. And that's going to be very, very difficult for the Protoss to really deal with here. And here we go. Where's the Protoss army actually? The Protoss army looks to be in the main base. And well, actually, trying to figure out where to drop these Banelings. He's going to drop them on the cannons. Yep, dropping a few of them on the cannons. Can he get all these sentries though? Looks like he doesn't quite get the sentries though. I think that would have been a little bit more important in making this attack succeed. Um, but actually, it looks like the Protoss has actually just force field himself into the main base. The entire front is getting taken down, but he's stuck behind his force fields. He's now able to move out a little bit here, but I don't... Is he even walled? No, he's not quite walled in. But, uh, man, these Hydras is doing massive amounts of damage. Oh my god. Far too much damage done from the Hydras. There's no way he can hold this calm with a creepy looking look on his face. Uh, is gonna take this game. There's absolutely no chance now. There's a mortal there, but what's that gonna do against Hydras? Absolutely nothing. And that is going to be it. Dropping down to 20 supply here. The Hydra is going to end the game. A sick Baneling drop strategy from Calm is going to end it. GG! And Calm makes it a 4 0. With Baneling drop into Hydra's. Squemchi's like, what the hell was that? And Air Force Ace goes down. STX gets a much needed win as well as improving their overall game score. So yeah, that is going to be that, ladies and gentlemen. Fortunately, we are done already for today. It's quite sad, but that's all right. There will be more matches coming up tomorrow and on Tuesday. And very soon we will be into the playoffs here, guys. It's just another week and a half or so of matches. Let's see. After today, there's going to be exactly six more matches. So Monday, Tuesday, and then Saturday, Sunday, and that, that will be it. Then there will be then we'll go to the playoffs. Should be very exciting. So. Yeah, stay tuned for details on that. I do plan to cast everything. I hope OGN don't like get just decide that, hey, we're just going to cast the finals in English for the first time ever and not let anybody else cast. That would make me very, very sad um, to not be able to cast the finals. So, uh, tomorrow is going to be Teammate versus CJ Entis. It's very exciting. Two of the top teams in Pro League right now. And on Tuesday will be Air Force Ace versus KT Rolster, which is interesting because those are two of the bottom teams, or they are the two bottom teams in Pro League in the rankings. So, do, do, do. And there you see the 4-0 victory.
경기에서의 수원갑은 조성호 선수가 살려낸 두 번째 경기가 아니다.